It's Mike. It's Danny. It's Uvo. It's Steve. And we're Landmark, and you're watching Live From. From. here at the Hotel de Kantenier in Hill. Now for those of you who are not in Holland, um, that is close to Ittervoort. And for those of you who still have no clue, um, we are here, um, well, because of the Rock Ittervoort Festival. And we are here with... Hi, I'm Steve G and I play bass guitar and sing backing vocals in Landmark. Right, hi, I am Uwe Di Roos. I'm the guitar player, and that's all I really do, just play guitar. Hi, Mike Varty, keyboard player for Landmark, I do a bit of backing vocals. It's not the first time you've played in Holland this year, hasn't it? Um, you've played here a couple of times before. I most certainly did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where, where did we play? Uh, we were here back in February. <laughs> um, in fact, we came over on a, a, another long weekend, um, starting on the 8th of February, um, at the De Lacay, is it Lacay? I'm never sure how to pronounce Lacay? that. Lacay, Lacay, okay, uh, in um, no, Lacay. Helmond. Yes. Yeah, so I remember. Um, and that was our first time back in Holland in how many years? A few years. A good few years. I would guess 10. It may be actually, <laughs> it may be 10, yeah, yeah. yeah. The following night we had a, an equally excellent gig. Uh, with one of the guys that probably, he was the first guy to book us for a gig in Holland, I, I would say, and that's Ari Verstegen at the Borderai. Although that was in uh, Uden when he first booked us, actually, back in the early 90s. Uh, and uh, Sunday we did another gig, which was another first for, for Landmark, which was Belgium. Um, that was Sunday the 10th of February. This is all just when we came. What are the memories, first time. Yeah. Sunday 10th of February, <laughs> Spirit of 66. We finally played there. We should have played there some years ago. And okay. It never quite came together and it just finally happened. And we had a, an excellent gig there as well. Met, made a lot of new friends, met some old friends and, and, and they were great. We should have done the Berg Keller in uh, Germany, in Reichenbach, yeah. um, on the Monday, Monday the 11th of February, but at that time it was very cold, there was a lot of snow happening as well, and we had a message from uh, Uwe Treitinger for the, uh, uh, from the Burkeller venue, and he actually advised us to maybe postpone the gig at the bird keller on that Monday because the, the roads were so bad. Yeah. Ten centimetres of and snow. There was quite a lot of snow on there. The yeah. bar, which was Come a bit dangerous. Well some reinforcements are coming in. That's it. A good time to uh, do another introduction. Hello. With I'm an unknown face. Oh. Um, <laughs> no, please go ahead. Introduce I'm yourself. Daniel the drummer of Landmark. Nice to meet you. He's well oh, trained. Well trained. That's good. Well, he had to ask us to do really? all those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he came straight out with it. <laughs> all right. Well, um, cool. To, to, now do, uh, start with you, uh, Danny. I mean, you are uh, fairly new uh, to the band. Um, when, when did you join Landmark? I joined. Good question. Last year, at some point. I think the first September. gig I did was November. November. Was I joined November. in September. Started rehearsing in September. End I September, think. beginning of October. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And yeah, that was yeah. it. And then played in November, and since then, yeah. Yeah, it's not that yeah, long. because uh, well, Dave Farkstaff uh, left the band, mm. unfortunately, did, yeah. um, and, and and you joined in. Um, how did you meet Landmark, or how did you get to know? The Online, band? they were looking okay. for a drummer, and I, I responded, and had it was three, a, it three was auditions. It was a <laughs> no, it was online, okay, and yeah. um, then had the first audition, second, the third audition. <laughs> and then got it after that. Yeah. Put the pool bugger yeah. through three auditions. No one else could be asked to do three auditions. No, we, put, we, put, we actually we came down to two drummers mm. and, and like they had different qualities and you know we kind of went for Danny because of his uh, 
It's youthful and, it's and kind of energetic and, and it's kind beard. of crisp playing, really. <laughs> and his beard. He didn't have a beard at the time. Did he? Oh, right. <laughs> I always dreamed of a beard at the time. <laughs> Well, he had, to, he had to age himself a little bit just to kind of catch up with us. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a, so a lot of aging. Bit, no. yeah. <laughs> awful lot of aging. <laughs> were you familiar with the, with the music of yeah. Landmark? Yeah, okay. I was brought up on prog and stuff like that. My father knew about Landmark already. Okay. So I, I, I was aware of them. Yeah. So I knew their music before I, I responded. Okay. And what, what did you do before you joined the band? Or did you play in any other bands? Uh, sorry, I'm just support. I've just seen the driver <laughs> we'll act, acting we'll, out. We'll bring Paul in in a minute. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Uh, I played in numerous bands. I studied. I came down to London from Glasgow to study drums at a place called Drum Tech. So I was studying for a couple of years and then played with random people, wedding band stuff, like session stuff, filling in for other drummers, yeah. and then yeah, that's so a bit of everything. Okay, and now, uh, now you're here? No, I'm here. Mr. Mike Farty is also, well, Relatively new <laughs> to Landmark. That's true. Ten years ago, wasn't that? Ten years ago. Okay. Gonzalo, wasn't it? Ten yeah. years ago. Gonzalo Carrera. But I did. I joined fairly, fairly quickly after that. Yeah. Okay. I, I te technically, I joined for the DVD. One. Really, <laughs> you know, Dave phoned me up and uh, said, "Do a DVD. Yeah, let's do." You know. Yeah, I mean, DVD. strictly so speaking, we, our history with Mike goes back much further. Oh, well, that's true. We do. Yeah, it does. You know, go back to sort of about the mid nineties, I think we might. And I Dave think maybe goes back we, further we actually, than that. We, we rehearsed in this lineup, in this very lineup, didn't we? We did. Yeah. Well, actually, no, sorry, with that, with with the previous drummer, but yeah. uh, that very lineup um, as a as Siren. Siren was a yes, yeah, which was a kind uh, of band forming in something. I don't know when it never really uh, materialised. It was yeah, yeah something five. sort of along the lines of a, a maybe a slightly more poppy. Commercial yes. um, probing. There's thing. one single photo. <laughs> yeah, which I've <laughs> around. got a copy. Yeah. I've got, I've got, got the that. original, I, should, I think. Have you got the original? I've, I've got, got a print copy. of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hard <laughs> copy yeah. version. But, uh, We've all yeah, got yeah. about three less wrinkles on our foreheads. <laughs> 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 and that's before Photoshop, obviously. Yeah, oh yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where well, we all look beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> speak for yourself. Now, in the meantime, uh, well, you are really back. I mean, you have uh, a new album out. Well, mm -hmm. it's been out, of course, for a while, but yeah. um, well, a very recent one, Entertaining Angels. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it took quite a while to get it out. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Yeah, uh, mainly because of sickness. Very, you know, centered centered around uh, Tracy, really. You know, who had cancer, etc. Yeah, and it, it just takes a long time to recover from it you know it's very simple and um and we had just simply had to wait until it, uh, until such time you know uh but i mean we're back and it took a while yeah it did the 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 writing process of the album how how did that go the actual title track for the album i mean uh, at the time we didn't actually know it was going to be called entertaining entertaining angels but what we did know i mean what i did i actually come up with the uh, uh, well in a roundabout way, I came, I came up with the, uh, the with, with this title, and it was just a song at the time. But mm -hmm. you know, and it was uh, but it was only later on that we decided um, that we're gonna was gonna call the album "Entertaining Angels." And uh, basically, what happened, you know, if you don't mind me saying, it um, that my father passed away in '95, and um, it was a very sad time, like it would be, and. Uh, Years later, I remember dreaming about dreaming about my my father, and uh, he, he and he said to me, he came to came to my dreams in, in my dreams, and he said, "Son," he says, "I'm very much like you, but I'm entertaining angels, where you are entertaining the people down here." And I woke up very quickly, very of a shock in actual fact, and I, and I raced towards the first a piece of paper and a pen where I could write it down. Otherwise, I would have forgotten about it, and I even had. A few, I heard a little bit of music, and whether that was r right or not, I'm not quite 100% sure whether that was re how, how right it actually was. But uh, that's how that melody line came to be, mm -hmm. you know, for the actual title track. 
and uh, that's how it worked. That's how it happens, and that's okay. that's the truth. It's just a it's an odd one. I understand, but not many people think. Well, oh, don't know, don't know about that. But it was, as I said, it was real to me, and uh, without it, it wouldn't have happened. Not okay. really, you know. And that was the story of entertaining angels. Even though he came back to me, if you like, I dreamt about him years after he passed. You know. And I wasn't quite, that's the last thing on my mind, to be, you know, to be honest. So I yeah. never thought that was going to happen or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, that is, that is the truth. That's how it was, you know. And, uh, yeah, and I thought I might as well use it. You know, maybe it was his gift to me. Who knows, yeah. you know. But uh, it did work, and here we are, you know. Say I, I recall a, a, a summer of um, of stuffing ourselves into into Dave's converted garage. <laughs> but actually, we were quite lucky because most bands would have a, a kind of problem rehearsing and writing and things like that. But Dave converted his garage so he could practice his drums. And uh, we we being a, being an expert host, we used to go around and drink all his coffee and eat all his food and hang around his place and drink his. Krupnik or whatever he got from mm. Poland, <laughs> and um, <laughs> Krupnik, yeah. Krupnik, lovely <laughs> stuff. And um, yeah, so we we'd rehearse in his uh, in his back room and what have you. And I just remember, I remember that time actually because it was quite interesting. Because it's funny, uh, somebody comes along with the bones of a song, and it's kind of half formed, and uh, uh, you know you you kind of play it on a w on a regular basis, and some fall away, some songs just sort of you don't get into them, and. You, you know, everybody sort of pushes it away, and, and so and other ones come up. Personal Universe by every week used to kind of come better and better. Trace used to come in new vocals and new ways to do bits and things. You know, orchestral bits used to come in and you know what have you. All the stuff that used to come together. So that's kind of that's what I remember of it anyway. It was a, mm. it was a very nice summer, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't remember. You weren't there. I know. Who are you? But anyway, we had. Yeah, uh, I mean, of course, we had. This was one of just a few, few of the new num newer numbers that we'd never played anywhere else. These yeah. were brand new songs. Um, but of course, we, we'd also, um, as Mike said earlier, he was brought in to officially join Landmark to help with the trip to Poland to do this uh, DVD, which yeah. became Turbulence. Yeah. And of course, we had the majority of what was on there really sort of formed what became the album Entertaining Angels. Yeah. Uh, and of course, that you know, which now includes the newer tracks such as Personal Universe and Glowing and, yeah. and such. Turbulence. Uh, turbulence itself, yeah. Um, we always like this quirky thing of um, putting the title track of an album onto the next album, uh, such as we did with Solitary Witness, Infinity Parade, Vision Pit and so on previously. Um, but uh, the songs were recorded really already yeah. as live versions okay. from the Poland DVD because I guess we really thought uh, the plan was to record an album, release that, go and do a tour. Yeah. Like, um, Record that with the DVD when the offer came to do the Poland thing, and that would have been the normal sort of run of uh, the sequence of yeah. um, things happening, but it didn't work out that way, uh, partly because of um, time, bad timing for certain things, and studios weren't available, and yeah. then other things were happening. Uh, and essentially, we just um, thought also when Tracy began to sort of fall ill as mm -hmm. well. We thought we'd better just get something out if yeah. we can. Um, to get something out there, you know, for the for the fans and get something in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, because we had no idea at that point whether there would be another studio album. So it seemed the best thing to do at the time. Yeah. And uh, of course it took another what uh, for so seven years oh, seven, since the release of Turbulence the DVD yeah. to come to this point. Um, well, six years, six, yeah, years, yeah, six years, perhaps, I should say sure. six years. 
to to bring that to fruition. You know, yeah. what we what should have been you know a few years earlier, three years earlier at least anyway. Well, it was beyond our control anyway. You know, yeah. there's nothing much you can do. You know, what mm -hmm. can you do? Yeah. But we, we've got some friends, you know, that uh, are involved in studios and a um, bit of marketing and so on, and um, they've been able to help. And some, you know, people have been generous with their time and efforts, um, and it's sort of helped us get this together as well, you know, get this whole Entertaining Angels album together and then Mike yeah. of course you know was putting a lot of time on the production side as well which um, we might pay him for one day <laughs> <laughs> people's copies as well came with a, with a little additional CD yeah um, so please tell what, what what was the story behind that um, <laughs> <laughs> well actually I guess it's, 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 it's the, fun, no, the, the funny thing is it's it's kind of like um, as I say some songs when you're writing some songs fall by the wayside but some don't fall by the wayside and I think when we'd done the DVD of course that had unreleased tracks on it or unreleased <coughs> studio album tracks as Steve said and then when we came to kind of take all the other songs that, that were knocking around, there were four, you know, four, was it four perhaps or whatever, that were mm. stonkingly good songs. And we, took, we kind of took them to the conclusion while we were waiting for kind of convalescence, I guess. Um, and then we went and recorded. We, we always thought, well, we've got the songs, let's record them in the studio, because we've got the studio, we've got the songs, we can always do something with them later. And I think also, in, in, my, in my mind, and probably everybody else is, they disagree in a minute perhaps, but it was, we were all looking to make some new music mm. because having put all those new songs on the DVD, they weren't, they, they weren't new music to us anymore, so we had to write a substantial amount of new music, which meant that we then had spare songs which were unreleased. Uh, and then we had a big argument about what songs to put on which albums. <laughs> a big discussion. No, it, it was, because it's, it's a difficult, difficult thing. Which yeah. ones do you put on the bonus CD? I and mean, they're all very strong songs. And people come up and say, "Oh, you know, this is my favourite song, but it's on the bonus CD." Well, well, yes, sorry. <laughs> <You know. laughs> we argued so long. We, this is the set. So we put all the new songs on the on the new CD, on the main CD, and some of the old songs on the bonus CD, and then a couple of the old songs on the on the main CD as well. Yeah. So we, you know, and we tried to make it, you know. Um, it, because there's, there's no difference. We could have made a double album. Yeah. It's not I mean, if I might just say, there's any add ons or anything. Yeah, like they're that. not. No. They, they're strong. Yeah, there's, there's, no, eyes, there's no you know? dig degradation. A lot mm. of bonus CDs are, have a bit less time spent on them, but these yeah. were all yeah. full on. I, oh. I, I really, really like the packaging. And, and mm. we didn't know how to release it or anything. And, and the kind of people we're working, QED, working with um, QED management kind of came up with this bonus CD. QED Yes, QEDs. QEDG management. So they, they just said, well, bonus CD and, uh, and a nice cardboard, whatever. It'll cost a bit more, but uh, it'll produce a nice product because you haven't been around for a while and mm. people will like that. And, yeah. you know, and people do. I like it. I think it's quite a special edition. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I guess the other thing to note about it is that every track on the Entertaining Angel, Angels album, although the songs are old, Every track has been re-recorded, so they are. It oh yes, is, everything absolutely. is newly recorded. Yes. It's not like we just took and the, the old live some, In versions. some cases, rearranged. Uh, everything is brand re rearranged yeah. as well. So different they are. They are. Di it's a different album, even to the Turbulence live album. So no, it's been re-recorded from the ground up. Yeah. yeah. Although there's like Mountains of Anger is on both, and you've got um, Entertaining Angels on both, and one or two other tracks, Spider Man, and so on. Um, yeah. They are new versions of those songs, you know, uh, okay. really cool. The way they should have been, to be honest, the way, they, the way we saw them yeah. evolve, you mm -hmm. know, but uh, it never happened at the time, but we took the time this time around. 
but and we're generally very happy with the results you know I really like it and I'm sure well yeah. we had some very good reports and yeah hope to get some more of it yeah. well that, that would be nice I mean of course now the album is out and uh, well out for a bit and you're touring how how is it feel to be back uh, well, back on stage again and, and performing mm. I love it so it's really nice it's not it's not it's uh, this it's what we do and uh, we're very very comfortable doing it you know it's great to go back to Holland and Germany and all these places and it's you know having a good time yeah it's important yeah. yes absolutely having a good time but yeah it is I think everybody was a bit worried about how how we how we come back, how we'd be received by, by people and of course, you know, yeah. how can you not be? Um, the, whole, the whole thing, very, 15 very months very ago, the big point when the album first came out, January 23rd, it came out, 2012, that was the official release date. It's memory man, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but Christmas of 2011, you know, just, you know, weeks before, it was an unknown quantity right until it came out and even for the first couple or so months after, but we uh, almost immediately we did start to see these reports coming in. You know, some yeah. excellent reviews, and and we knew we had a good product. We believed in it thoroughly, hundred and one percent. But you know, as Mike said, we didn't really. Know. It was it was still we were an unknown quantity, and there were people out there who also, you know, Landmark have been going now for like twenty three years, all told. Yeah. Um, and there are people out there who are hearing Landmark for the first time in this last year, uh, who I'm glad to say are, you know, digging what we do. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, you know, that it was at that back when the album first came out, it was an unknown area that we yeah. were about to sort of get back into, and we thought, you know, are, are they are we going to be sort of just reaccepted into the prog? thing. I mean we've, we've sort of can kept... We, can we keep up the youngsters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we recruited a youngster to yeah. go <laughs> well, So he can uh, nudge us away when we're dozing off in the afternoon. Yeah, we can, yeah. can, can they keep up with you? Never. <laughs> Useless. <laughs> we're past it. That's true. Yeah. The strikes I felt sorry for. So, <laughs> so true. Uh, Get back on the stage? Not for me. Uh, to be honest, I can only speak for myself. But I, I just love what I do anyway. So I just, I thought it was great. But you broke your fingers, so you had trouble. I, I did break I three of my fingers. <laughs> okay. That fashion, yeah. because I, we won't tell you how. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I used to always play with quite heavy strings, you know, for for quite some time. But I had to go right down to nine to forty-six, if that means anything to you. But I used to play with elevens, and it took me. A good two years to get back to any sort of strength to have okay. any sort of grip. My technique it had to it, it had to all evolve again from I wouldn't say totally from uh, from scratch, but it's yeah, it, it's felt like that. You know, it was like really horrendous. Actually, my God, it was painful. You know, I oh, think there was a period where yeah. uh, we weren't in my ears. We weren't terribly good. As in, I mean, it's all relative, isn't it? But I think there was. It was a breaking in period. Um, I mean, we did a couple of warm up, or, well, no, we did a couple of decent gigs in the mm. UK, not even warm up gigs. Um, well, so, oh, sorry, Mike, just yeah, well, say actually, yes. The, the first the, gig back, yeah, the first gig back was the stables at Milton Keynes, yes. which is an excellent venue supporting Martin Turner's Wishbone Nash. Okay. Um, yeah. Which at the time, Dave Wagstaff was still with us on drums, and he, of course, is the drummer for that band yeah and that kind of i suppose that cheapened the pot a little bit because we were able to kind of share the drum <laughs> and uh, yes. save the changeover at least yeah. in that respect but uh, no seriously though he um we know very quickly though that we was going to be that that, that, that could, gig was an excellent it, gig. yeah you could hear it it was all the all the aspects yeah. were there but uh, i don't think we gelled until we needed um, some more. Until we came out to here, probably. Yeah. You know, because 
it's just a comfort. It's just yeah. knowing that everybody's there and, and pulling yeah. together and things like that. The tour it's officially began in thing. November of uh, last year, 2012. Yeah. Uh, which was also Danny's debut for us as well. So we, then we did um, the various sort of UK venues such as the Robin to um, Riffs. Was the yes, Danfest, the, 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 the Danfest, uh, yes. Danfest two, in fact, Danfest yeah. two, in Leicester, and uh, a couple Sorry. of others. Couple of start, others yeah, I think we start to come together. So that you know, that's the thing. Um, Plus the Norwich, the CRS gig we did in Maltby, that was an excellent it gig. Was, that, yes. that culminated with that, and I uh, have to thank Danny's dad for coming all the way down for oh, a lunch. Right, yeah. Aberdeen, no, mm -hmm. Glasgow, 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 near Glasgow, yeah. down to Rotherham. Okay. Specifically they got pissed with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. Drinking whiskey. I didn't oh, touch uh, the stuff that time. In the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Not that time. Well, someone had to pay for the bill. Yeah. <laughs> but it was at that period, I think, that we felt like the band was beginning to really gel. Also, yeah, it was. In, in that respect, you know. Yeah. In, from a, from it's like, I think, um, I think you, you can kind of like, you can tell. I mean, I, you might know. You know, I can tell, but I mean, everybody can tell in the band we're listening. I think punters can probably tell as well. You kind of can bounce back <coughs> with a better, you know, relaxed performance. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think we, you know, we kind of like we just blew Zootomir away, didn't we? You know, the, uh, a yeah. couple of months ago, and that's probably, you know, the pinnacle at the moment, if you like. So uh, that's mm -hmm. what we're going to repeat tonight, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the blockbuster landmark. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's. it's um, so I suppose it's uh, it was it, yeah the question was is it was it a little bit tricky to get back I th I reckon it was a little bit tricky mm, but of course yeah. we all know our instruments as yeah. well so we can it's not like we're just stepping up there and yeah, of course. you know wondering what's going on I think on. it was it's just no more or less tricky than any other band you yeah. know when you first uh, start out again mm -hmm. you know, after a long period mm -hmm. uh, yeah. not being together you know uh, coherent it's been really enjoyable though. so yeah, oh, but yeah. the journey honest, was yeah. great the encouraging yeah. thing has been that in all of the gigs there have been people that do did remember us that do remember us have seen us before we're still alive we're still alive <laughs> and kicking and uh, and w have come out to see us again and say hello and it's been great seeing those and just of course meeting new people yeah. who haven't seen us before who've still we're still there at the end of the gig as well. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, true, that's very really nice. Yeah. I, I do believe, uh, uh, Mr. Mike Varty, that uh, you know <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, it's true. I did actually. Yes, I was taken entirely by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I had a, um, a, a cut, an email. Actually, Steve sent me the email, didn't you? You sent me an email mm. saying that Stephen Lamb suggests you go to the awards ceremony. Yeah, it might be in your interest. It might be in your interest. <laughs> and I thought, oh, hello, what's this all about? Yeah. And I kind of like my head started putting things together. And I, I really didn't, really didn't think of the keyboard particularly thing. I mean, I thought, well, that's possible. I play, I play that. But um, I thought, well, maybe Landmarks won something, and you know, Steve was wanting to go. But I knew Tracy was out of the country. I knew Clive, who's the uh, former forerunners of that sort of prize on a regular Clive Damien so yeah. everybody was out of the country doing Clive's JJ, um, alchemy really of course. Um, yeah. and uh, so I kind of went along there wondering what was going on really and, and I was kind of like you know fairly chilled out and then uh, and then of course nominations and the winner is there you go so I had no speech prepared <laughs> I burbled my way through a couple of thanks to everybody and uh, and that was about it really but I met Bob Harris very nice chap. Mm. <laughs> very nice chap. And he yeah. whispered just like he does on the telly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's got a very deep voice. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, it, was, it was good, actually. So I'm, I'm honoured to everybody who, um, who voted for that. So uh, thank you very much, everybody who voted for that. Yeah. Um, it was it good. Was at least 17 people, I heard. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, I'm a member, and um, everybody was trying to get me to vote for myself, but I didn't vote for myself. I said to Danny I'd have voted for him if he'd have paid me, but he's, he's from Glasgow, he didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs>
But uh, no, I, I didn't vote for anybody that I know because I'm a, I'm a member on behalf of Landmark anyway. But I didn't vote even for myself, so yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't me. <laughs> And how does it feel to take it over uh, from Clive? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a sort of little joke because uh, I think it's about 15 years ago was the last time I went to the CRS Awards and um, I accepted the prize on Clive's behalf <laughs> because he wasn't there. As per okay. normal, he's never there, is he? So um, I'm thinking if I, if you know, maybe if I'm going to win it again, you know, I'll get Clive to pick it up for me next time. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Clive would actually do that. Yeah, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, yes, it's, it's it's sat on my shelf next to the telly and uh, what have you. But it's no, it's good <laughs> because uh, I mean, I you know, I play in a fair few bands, as you know. But um, it's nice to be to sort of see some recognition like that, if you like, because it kind of you know, if a little bit of pressure, I suppose. Ooh. You better be good. <laughs> well, I suppose that's so. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really consider myself to be as good as many people I see out there, including no. life, to be honest. Yeah, it, it yeah. is a fact that uh, you do play in, in a lot of bands. And, I do. And, you know, one of the things I was wondering about. I mean, is because if you are sort of forced on a, a bit of a hiatus, uh, you know, what what do you do then? How do you fill up that time? And well, in in your case, I can uh, <laughs> have a, a pretty good guess. But but are there other things besides making music that you do? Um, well, I, I have a, a regular job as well because this music business just doesn't make any money. <laughs> um, yes, I do. I, I have a regular job, which I'm I'm a contractor, so I, I do earn other money. In fact, all my money Absolutely. comes from this other job because, uh, I, like I say, even though it w perhaps would appear that I like play in four or five bands, most most bands or most prog bands, let's say, um, will go out and play to pay, play, pay, pay to play, in that they won't charge enough for their petrol, they won't charge enough for their meals, they won't charge enough for the hotels. Um, and unless you get on a, on a decent tour or a good tour and you're pulling the people in, then you can't really do that. Certainly the UK market is rubbish, so you'll get rarely kind of get any return in the UK market. Few, there are very few people who make their business in, the, in, the, in this prog music. Um, so I have a regular job, but it, I, I, it's temporary, it's part time. Um, yeah. It's not temporary work, it's part time, which is really good because I can then um, put that other time into the music and things like that. And also it means that uh, I can have some spare time occasionally because if I was full time then I'd be spending all my other time on music. <laughs> yeah. So that's how, I, that's how I make ends meet and okay. that's also how I manage to get so much music in. I, I'm only in so many bands because you can't really... You can't. I, I can't mm. exist in one <coughs> band. Can't get to play enough. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> if I could true. play every day in one band, I'd do that instead. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, you, you're in three bands. You're in three bands. I've got four. You play. On you do band. whatever, do don't one, you? Yeah, what do you do? I don't. I, I like play studio Landmark session because, work. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like Landmark. That's what I do. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'd have to say Landmark is my main uh, musical. Um, love if you like but it's not as Mike says you know we don't exactly make any money from this uh, um, so we do other other things yeah. um, I play in a, a function band a club band and that's you know that does certainly gig on average it gigs more certainly than Landmark yeah. you, know, you know we play gigs around the, you know the sort of London and the home counties really that's about it but um and then I do a, another thing, which is a, just more for love than anything, which is in a jazz quartet. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got a couple of recording projects with different people. But yeah. uh, again, you know, none of them really. I couldn't go to any one of them and think, right, that can pay the rent for me. Yeah. You know, which I, it doesn't do. So. <laughs> Unfortunately, not no. now. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have recorded in, uh, a few albums here and there, mainly ambient stuff and I've been in a band called Cooch as well which um, with Dave Wagstaff mm -hmm. which, uh, the, you know our original drummer that was nice um, I think we've done it for about three years or something like that roughly and uh, I was gigging all the you know different home counties and um, which is a which was a Persian sort of uh, world music thing really um, very atmospheric, you know, mainly in 6-8, if that means anything, and um, allegedly it was 
It, it was in the charts in Tehran for 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 two years. Okay. <laughs> Whether that is true, I don't know. But I've been told that that was so. I to love them. Uh, but, but other than that, no, I d it's, uh, it is Lama, that is my main thing. And I've done all that though. I've done plenty of other things. Yeah. You know. For myself, I speak for myself, that's all I need. You know, It's what I, it's what I like to do. Um, and it satisfies me. You, know. you, you mentioned already some things, of course, but uh, do, do you have any other current projects besides yes. Landmark? Yes. Um, I'm in a band called Fighting Wolves, who are in the process of who Paul's in. Our driver and handyman on tour. Hello, Paul. He's a singer and guitarist of Fighting Wolves. <laughs> we've just we're, we've almost finished the album. I did the drums in January, and it should be out within a month. Once it's mixed, we're just finishing vocals and the guitar yeah, track. Um, so <laughs> there's Fighting Wolves. There's a band called Distorting Glass, which is kind of a bit proggy, um, a little bit heavier, industrial. There's another band called July, who are from the 60s, so they're a psychedelic band, and they reformed, and uh, a function band as well, similar to Steve's, so we do weddings and corporate yeah. events and random things, and I work in a drum shop when I'm not doing that, so it's constant drums. <laughs> out in the open everybody uh, can listen to it can buy it of course they have to buy it very That's important true. i mean we just heard yes. you know that you can't make a living from music so you know if the more people buy the music well that's the better for you of course uh, to keep on going but let me say buy it from the website because more money goes to the band and where is the website mike oh www.landmark.net yes <laughs> or www.entertainingangels.info you're good. Excellent. But no, see, on a serious note, that's what that's mm. um, the, the the more we can personally sell through the band. Obviously, we, we yeah. were just talking about kind of how we fund all these things, um, and it's usually by beg borrowing and stealing all sorts of things. Um, it, the more we can sell directly, um, the more money we get because, of course, we take all that profit, and it's not that big. <laughs> but <laughs> of course, if it goes through distributors, much as we like all the distributors because they work very hard to put it in different places, but uh, if you get an opportunity mm. to buy it direct from us, then please do. And we promise to post it fairly rapidly. So, okay, that's, that's, where, they, well, that, that's where they can buy the album, very yes. important. <laughs> um, now, at this moment, you're you know, touring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not too big a word, touring. Yeah, you're playing mm -hmm. here and there. This is, the <laughs> yes. this is Angels on Tour. Angels. Yeah. <laughs> Angels on Tour, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, so, what's next? Uh, got some more gigs coming up after this weekend of gigs, um, after which we return home. That we're going to try and get together because we've got ideas for the next album, new songs, so that, that will start to happen gradually. But uh, uh, 6th of October, we uh, make an appearance at Summer's End Festival, also in the, both in the UK. Uh, that's at Lydney Town Hall, Gloucester. Or Gloucestershire. Yeah. yeah okay, so there's still some opportunities. There's still, yeah, absolutely. And we'll have some more announcements for further gigs as well. And, and of course, we hope to come back not to Europe. Uh, the third leg of the tour. As well. Yeah. That's yeah. sort of carrying on. So it's basically we're working towards more live dates and more recordings, new recordings yeah. as well. Okay. You know, which is in the pipeline now. You know, we're just working. Just they're sorting out the finer points. Yeah. You know how it is. We have a, you know, every time we get together for a rehearsal, there's usually a, a point where we might jam through some stuff. And Mike's usually got a little the digital recorder on the side somewhere. Yeah. So, you know, he's probably got a stack of. I have. Uh, <laughs> I was looking through the other day, mm. actually, um, while, whiling away my time, mm. listening to the snippets that were on my recorder, much like you yours, actually had uh, some spare time. I had some spare time. <laughs> wow. I think I was, um, I was in the car 
being driven. Mind, this was probably 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> Sam was driving me to a gig, and I was yeah. in the car with the laptop listening to something. But yeah, there's some brilliant stuff there, actually. It was yeah. really nice, and I found a very nice piano thing that Tracy mentioned. Mm. Um, and she said to me, she sort of said about, we had a rehearsal, and we'd, we'd jam a bit, and then like about towards the end of the rehearsal, she came along and said, um, could you play that piano bit again? And I went, mm. oh, what, like the one we played like five hours ago at 11 mm. o'clock this morning? No, not at all. But anyway, I finally found it. It's like about five, probably about 10, 20 seconds of piano. But it's like it's quite a nice, nice little piano thing. And I think what happened was that obviously lit a little something in her head and she mm -hmm. put a lyric or a tune to that or something. So that's how it happens. And then you, I'll dig that out, have a listen to it, work it out or whatever. And then she'll have the tune to put on it or something, you know. So that's what we do. There's some good, there's some good stuff, actually. Mm. And then it kind of like gets tossed about, changed and everything. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Speaking of numbers as well, in, in fact, I should just make a small apology to various people, fans and such, that have actually requested on these live dates that we play some old landmark songs. We've had, I mean, Lighthouse was always our sort of... Um, staple? Staple. Thing, Clockbuster. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, one, one for Danny to yet to get his uh, drumsticks around, uh, among others, but uh, other songs such as Science of Coincidence we've been specifically asked to do. Um, but at the same time, of course, we are promoting the, the newer album, and it just hasn't been the time, to be fair, to get these older songs back into the sort of live set. Yeah. So that's been been a bit tricky. And at the same time, when we come back or go out again in, say, later in the year, it may well be that we'll have a, a brand new song to debut with the band rather than an old song. But it's trying to please everybody, which is always a difficult thing. So I just wanted to make that sort of little apology if you like <laughs> about that. So. Yeah. Okay, well of course it's quite understandable. Um, now that you mentioned the live set, um, just checking if, if a rumour is true uh, that a show on uh, one of the recent performances was recorded. And yeah, where could have heard something <laughs> like that? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I can't. I don't recall. <laughs> I think that there were probably a couple of hundred people back in February that would definitely know because um, that was at the border right. Um, nothing definite. I'll hand over to Mike. Uh, <laughs> nothing <back>. definite. <laughs> well, I, I, yes. Um, I mean, in, we, in we, terms we of desperately want to yeah. like want to get the show out, basically. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's been recorded. It, yeah. yeah. It, it, we've got um, we've got the all the tracks from the Boo Row. We've got um, six camera video. We've got uh, we've got Paul. Paul's our video editor. Again. Give us a wave, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> no, he's and, and he's he's um, he's been cutting together a uh, kind of like a single song comments. so far. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna certainly put something up on YouTube. Like I just hope the rumor can prove true. Actually, um, we we want to be able to release that, um, and we'd like to be able to release that by October. Uh, I mean, there's a certain amount of work involved in that. In first of all, you know, finding how to mix it and all the financial issues and how to, yeah. you know, and where it gets released and who releases it. We're talking to two different people at the moment about releasing that. Um, and precisely how it gets. Uh, videos are always much more tricky than than recording albums. I mean, you go into a studio and you record it. On DVDs, you've got the, the you know, all the tracks and everything. It's damn long. How long do you make it? Editing DVDs. We've got Paul doing that and all that. Um, and it's just uh, it's just more things to kind of you know to be done if you like. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try and squeeze that. It, I suppose it is. It probably should remain a bit of a rumor, but we want to do it. And, and we're kind of like fairly confident that we're going to get it done. Uh, and that will be as live CD and a DVD or something like that. Um, and if, uh, I don't really know what, we, we just mentioned we're going to come back in October, hopefully. So that's something that we're going to be promoting around that time. Um, and that's all I can say, really. Mm. It's, it's like it's all there ready to be done. Um, and then there's artwork and all sorts of things. And names, gosh, you're going to have to discuss the name of the album. Mm. Lots to do. Lots, Lots to, to do. do. But that's, that's a good rumour, isn't it? Yeah. That, that's, that's a good, a good rumour. Well. <laughs> uh, and that, well, that gives us something uh, to look forward to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I would like to thank you all very much for uh, taking the time um, today. It's and, good and to see you again, Marcel. 
Um, it's been a little while. We, have, uh, yeah. we still have a show to look forward to. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're going to do that. Yeah. Forgetting that, actually, I was ready to just turn in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks no so very much. Thank you very much.